Welcome to Sheboygan County Government Working For You. My name is Adam Payne, co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased that our guest is Mike Helke, the Sheriff in Sheboygan County. Mike's been tremendously busy of late and he's going to share with you some of the roles and responsibilities of the Sheriff's Department as well as talk a little bit about the PGA and what was a highly successful week in great part because of Sheriff Helmke and the work that he did, his staff, and obviously the state and other levels of government. So Mike, welcome, for, and it's good to have you with us today. I know you've been very busy. Thank you. Why don't you start by sharing with our viewers a little bit about yourself and your law enforcement career. I know you've been with Sheboygan County for some time. Yes, um, I, uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Sheboygan County, born and raised in the county. Uh, I'm 48 years old. I am married and have two adult children. Uh, professionally, I have been with the department uh, just about 27 years. Um, I started my career as a deputy working in corrections where I worked in the jail for about three years. Then I transferred to the road. After that, uh, I was uh, promoted to sergeant, eventually to lieutenant, and then I took um, shift commander's responsibilities in, over in the mid-1990s. Uh, ran for sheriff, uh, was elected sheriff in November of 2002, and took office January of 2003. During the course of my career, I was involved in uh, many different um, units uh, and special teams in the department, including the SWAT team, our tactical team. Um, I was a field training officer, an officer in charge of high-risk incidences, and a, a, an internal affairs investigator. So it's going to be two years as sheriff this January, and as you just shared, you bring a, a wealth of knowledge and expertise to the position. Uh, in these two years, which I imagine have flown by pretty quickly, what have been some of the key challenges that you've had? Yes, they have uh, flown by quickly. I can't, can't believe that I'm almost midterm already and that uh, uh, running for sheriff uh, may be right around the corner again. Um, obviously, challenges for not only our department, but all um, government uh, departments is uh, with the shrinking in tight budgets, um, being able to provide the s same level of services that we currently provide. Um, many of our, our programs are, are funded through state and federal funds, and uh, there's talk that if those are reduced, um, any further, that could have an impact on our budget, uh, on our ability to provide those programs as well. So the budget, coupled with the uh, um, uh, increasing cost of doing business in terms of health insurance and employee benefits and just uh, cost of doing business, gasoline, price of equipment, automobiles, radios, and all of those things that we need to do our job continues to increase at the same time budgets become tighter, so that I see as a huge challenge. So be, being able to become um, more effective and efficient, um, I'm continually tapping my staff for recommendations and suggestions on how we can do that. And so far you've certainly done an admirable job. I'm glad you raised this because our next month our guest is going to be Tim Finch, the Finance Director, and certainly as you and Chairman Gehring know, we're in the midst of our budget process and not only for the sheriff's department but all 23 departments it's a real challenge to continue to provide the same level of service or improve with finite resources so uh, certainly that's been a challenge for you you've also uh, made some changes while you've been here the last couple of years uh, some reorganization what have you you want to talk briefly about some of the accomplishments sure uh, last year we cut uh, about a half a million dollars from our budget the year before that the year that I took office the uh, reductions that I inherited from the previous administration was uh, about four hundred and twenty thousand um, dollars so we're looking at uh, about a million dollars um, since I've been sitting in the sheriff's seat that we've reduced from our budget and I'm happy to say we were able to do that without reducing services without laying off employees. And some of the ways that we've been able to accomplish that is by doing some reorganization of our staff um, within the department. Um, uh, I campaigned on, on looking at reorganizing the department from the top all the way down and put those resources where they were most needed. And I'm happy to say that we've done some of that. Uh, we've 
uh, cut uh, three corporals positions and added a couple of deputies positions. I'm currently working on a reorganization proposal that will come before the county board tonight, as a matter of fact, um, to uh, eliminate one of the director's positions and um, put, uh, put, spread some of that out in, in other areas where, where we as an administrative staff saw a need. Clearly some, and difficult decisions to make, but as you said, with a reduction of almost a million dollars in financing, you've been able to, to meet the challenge of hitting those targets and help Chairman Gehring and the rest of the county board keep tax rate increases at a minimum. Why don't we step back just for a second, because we probably assume most people, when they hear Sheriff's Department, they, they know what that readily means, but you have a number of areas of responsibility within the department. What's the primary roles and responsibilities of the Sheriff's Department? Well, uh, the Sheriff's in, in the state of Wisconsin and probably like many other states uh, have constitutional responsibilities that are basically defined in, in Constitution going way back to early t times of when our state was formed. And um, some of those constitutional responsibilities of a sheriff that of a sheriff and a sheriff's department that differ from municipal police departments are that the sheriff has to provide for inmates and people that are incarcerated for from every agency within the county. So therefore, we we are the keeper of the county jail. Um, a huge part of our responsibility, a huge part of our operations, and a huge part of our budget is devoted to corrections. Um, Another area is that uh, we, uh, constitutionally, we are required to provide a civil process uh, division. Now these are deputies that um, go out and serve all types of civil process papers from evictions to um, uh, divorce uh, uh, decrees to any type of court summons. Um, we have uh, four deputies that work full time in serving civil process. Uh, another constitutional responsibility of the sheriff is to provide for courtroom and courthouse security. Uh, we do that in the form of the bailiffs that we have assigned to one of each to one of the five uh, circuit courts that we have in Sheboygan County. Um, the sheriff is also required to regulate the uh, storage and transportation of explosives within their jurisdiction uh, to provide uh, water uh, recovery and rescue uh, team and obviously to provide uh, law enforcement services to the other areas of the county that may not have their own municipal police department. And I know you just scratched the surface, so again, those divisions, corrections, civil process, criminal investigations, patrol. A little later, we're gonna talk about your emergency management responsibilities in that position. How many employees does the department have and what's your, what's your budget? We have approximately 180 employees um, at any given time take or uh, plus or minus a few. Um, uh, we have uh, just under a, a $12 million budget and um, we, uh, we accomplish that as you said through uh, uh, different divisions and different work units within the department. So a tremendous amount of responsibility, a lot of areas that many of our viewers may have not heard of before and some people may even for forget we have responsibilities with corrections and the, the jail and the detention center. And then the PGA hits the town. And with that, I'll turn it over to Bill Gehring. Okay, we have just come off of the PGA week, and I'm sure that your department contributed to it really being a success, but I'm sure it also put a burden on your department. Can you talk, Sheriff, about when you started planning and what the planning entailed for this event? Yes, um, we actually started planning for this over two years ago. Uh, the uh, the, the PGA brought a tournament director into the community about two years ago and um, his responsibility was basically herding together all of these resources that would be needed in the various areas um, uh, to pull off a tournament like that everywhere, everything from you know the areas that my department was involved in, traffic security, um, emergency management and, and things like that all the way to um, parking, um, transportation, security, hospitality, food stands and everything like that. So uh, that individual coming in with that knowledge basically split all of these jobs up into different working committees and we fell into that committee that dealt with traffic, security and, and um, emergency medical services and um, those types of things. So it's called the SPEC committee and that's an acronym and I don't remember exactly 
what it all stands for. So we, um, we provided um, people that were involved in, in, in that, uh, on that committee to implement the plans that we ultimately developed and um, put into place for the tournament. Okay. Uh, how was the planning different than the planning you would do for Road America or the uh, Sheboygan County Fair? Obviously much smaller activities, but still activities within the county. Yeah, the uh, Road America and um, the Sheboygan County Fair were basically, there, there was not this uh, cooperative effort of all of these different agencies. We kind of just planned it within our own department to deal with the traffic and security at these events and, um, you know, went with our plan, plans that we've been you know, utilizing for many, many years. As long as I've been on the department, we've been doing Road America, and Road America, is, I think, has uh, just celebrated its 50th anniversary recently, so it's been around a long time. Uh, Sheboygan County Fair is another huge spectator event that Sheboygan County hosts, um, one of the largest state, uh, one of the largest county fairs in the state um, in terms of, uh, of attendance. Um, and uh, we've, uh, we work closely with uh, the Plymouth Police Department in providing for security traffic uh, measures for that. But this, this really differed in a way that I think this was very unique in that um, there was this relationship between the Kohler Company, who brought their resources into the equation, um, the, the, the county, the PGA, the federal government, uh, all working together to basically uh, accomplish a common goal and uh, in, in, in terms of coordinating and having resources available t to me or to my department, this was clearly different than Road America and the county fair. Okay. I was out there for a media event on Thursday and it really seemed to be a nicely behaved crowd. I understand that there were no arrests, is that true? And also, what was your major challenge? With the uh, folks there, there? there were no arrests. Um, our, our responsibility um, for the conduct of people at the tournament itself was to basically supplement the security company that the PGA had hired, unless, of course, our officers um, witnessed a, uh, a crime being committed in their presence. Um, so there were no arrests made. There were, uh, were a couple of people that were ejected um, during the course of the week, but very few that I'd heard about. Um, very few issues as far as uh, uh, rowdy behavior or disorderly conduct. In fact, I hadn't heard of any real significant issues. Um, so it was a was a very well behaved uh, crowd. Okay. Uh, earlier this year, your department hired a new emergency management coordinator. Did that person have a role in planning for the PGA? And if so, what might it have been? Yes, um, he did. Um, his his name is Steve Steinert. Um, his uh, his roles. It, his role in the PGA was significant. Um, he was there to um, plan for uh, plan and be part of our um, disaster planning. Um, say if uh, there were um, a need to evacuate the pe people from the grounds for whatever reason, it could be because of weather or um, of uh, uh, something that had occurred on the course that would require evacuation. He was there for that planning. He worked uh, closely with uh, the federal and state agencies, the FBI, ATF, and um, the Coast Guard, um, as well as um, the medical staff that was um, uh, contracted by the PGA to provide uh, medical services at the tournament. So he was kind of our coordinator or our liaison to all of those different entities. Okay. Also, while out there, I saw a fair amount of state patrol cars. I know that the state did help pay for overtime incurred by county officers. Can you talk about how the state and county work together and was this really a good working relationship and maybe we can say to the viewers that yes, the county and state can work together? Um, I, I can definitely say that we work very well together. Uh, you know, up until really uh, probably about eight months ago, we as a department didn't um, anticipate the, um, the buy-in that, that the state provided uh, to us uh, for our responsibilities or towards our responsibilities. So it was, we were very happy to find out that the state was going to provide all of these resources, um, additional troopers, um, the, uh, the, the, the money to uh, pay for our overtime expenses. Um, 
and uh, things like that uh, were totally unanticipated at, at the beginning of this planning. So uh, in terms of, of them bringing those resources in, and as far as our officers working together to get the job done, uh, that relationship went very, very well. Okay. While he was out there also, I did happen to talk with the governor twice, and he was very complimentary about Sheboygan County and how they handled the PGA. So I'm sure that your department greatly contributed to this. So I thank you, Adam. I thank you, Sheriff. I thank you, too. Um, I, I also talked to the governor a couple of times out there, and um, he was very pleased, as well as the secretary of the Department of Transportation um, had been out there, and I heard nothing but good things. Um, not only you know from the job that we did, but really the overall effort by by everybody um, to just make the experience um, a phenomenal experience for the spectators that were in attendance. Great. Many people, I'm sure, aren't aware of this. Certainly, our viewers. But uh, just to let you know, Sheriff Helmke, when this was all being planned, obviously he mentioned earlier the challenges with budget, and we were looking at close to $100,000 of overtime for this event. And Sheriff Helmke, to his credit, said, all right, state of Wisconsin, we need you to step up and be part of this and to work with us. And I can't credit you enough and credit your department enough for just a tremendous job. Not only was he successful in garnering the dollars from the state to cover all of our overtime, at least that's my understanding, um, the traffic flow was just excellent. I don't care what time of the day it was, uh, Mike and his staff did just a tremendous job moving traffic along. The only constructive criticism or, or negative feedback that I've heard is that some of our local merchants would have liked to see more of those people come into Sheboygan to, to shop at their stores, what have you. But other than that, from top to bottom, it's been nothing but positive and you certainly delivered on your part. And it's good to hear that the state and the county work so well together on this. It, uh, it, it's just all, all of us went into it with expectations, and I think they were exceeded in most areas, so well done. Thank you. So moving on from the PGA, and you probably haven't had a lot of sleep the last week, and I know many of your officers were working overtime 30, 40 plus hours a week. Uh, it's back to the budget. It's back to more of the roles and responsibilities that you generally deal with. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion of late with the city and the, the building of a new police department. And as I'm sure many of our viewers are aware, there were negotiations between the city and the county, and, and we're not going to get into that today. But one of the key things that's been discussed is how much is the city and county really working together? There are always opportunities for improvement, but sometimes I think people don't appreciate just how much is currently going on. Could you give our viewers an example of some of the areas where the city police department and the sheriff's department is working together. Yeah, uh, probably very little credit to me, but uh, we've had a great re working relationship with the Sheboygan Police Department as well as all of the uh, other municipal law enforcement agencies in, in Sheboygan County for years. Uh, I, I just, I see my role as uh, to facilitate and to enhance that uh, cooperative um, relationship that we've really had with these agencies for a long time. Um, we share communications uh, now since we've hit, uh, built the 800 megahertz uh, radio system a number of years ago. We have commonality there in, in frequencies and repair technicians and in resources to draw into our communications. Um, we share records, uh, records management system with the Sheboygan Police Department as well as uh, the village of Kohler, uh, the city of Falls, uh, Sheboygan Falls and the city of Plymouth. Uh, we, uh, we have a combined dive team with the city police department. We have our MEG unit or our drug unit that is a cooperative effort of, as well, actually staffed by both um, city police officers and, and sheriff's deputies, but with support from the other um, law enforcement agencies in the county. Uh, we, we share our range at, at, at our facility with all of the law enforcement agencies in the county. We do training. Uh, Inter interdepartmental training with each other. Uh, we have access to the, the city of Sheboygan's canine unit if we're in need of uh, uh, canine services. We share our accident reconstructionist team with the city if they would need uh, our services and uh, equipment. Uh, we share back and forth. A good example was just last week with the PGA. Uh, we needed more radios and shoulder mics and things like that. The city had that equipment available and we were able to borrow it from, 
from them for a week. So there are a lot of things that are that that have been going on for a long time. Um, I see one of my major responsibilities is to continue to look at other ways we can share and other things that we can do together um, to ultimately reduce that duplication of services and um, and to be able to provide um, the the equipment and the items that we need for the community. Well, you hit on earlier that with budget constraints at all levels of government and certainly with the sheriff's department and the other departments in the county, any opportunities we have to uh, work together or share resources obviously is in the taxpayer's best interest. As you touched on, there's a number of areas that resources are being shared to the benefit of the community. But as you look forward, what do you see as perhaps some opportunities, whether it's the city of Sheboygan or any of the other uh, police departments in the county? Well. Um Training uh, is, is always an area uh, because of mandates that are placed on, on law enforcement officers to maintain certification are areas where I think we could do uh, and continue to do more um, training together. Uh, training space is, is always an issue and updated training facilities such as a range and um, an area where we can do tactical training, um, physical training and things like that is, is always an area that's you, you, you either don't have it or uh, in, in our case our facility is 25 years old and it's now time to update some of these things so with the city looking at building a new police department I'm hoping that we can build the infrastructure uh, that will accommodate those those needs in the future because our stuff is getting a little worn and outdated and, and tattered and, and here's an opportunity now they're going to build that uh, we could we could certainly share in that area and there's just a whole host of different things uh, that could be done we've talked about uh, possibly a joint communication system of, of some sort uh, uh, you know eventually pie in the sky we could maybe uh, combine our uh, mechanical area our our maintenance people our clerical people uh, but physically when you have separation it, it makes it difficult to do those types of things. So we're always open to that, and um, um, we have a real great relationship. We're talking, you know, obviously we had this unfortunate situation with one of our officers. We have a funeral coming up on Friday, and uh, the, the police department, as well as the other agencies in the county, says, hey, Mike, anything you need from us when this is going on, let us know. So, you know, we may be in need of some you know, employees to cover for our employees when the funeral goes on. So those are the types of things that um, that are, you know, that you have just based on the relationship that you have with these people. And um, uh, we continue to do those things, sometimes very behind the scenes. Uh, but uh, we're all in here to, to do one thing and one thing only, and that is pro to provide a uh, service to the community. You mentioned the firing range that we've been sharing with all the other municipalities for some time. Uh, we know that that's starting to get older and that's an opportunity for the future. Evidence storage is always a pressing need and it's just good and refreshing to hear you say that you're focusing on seeking additional opportunities because as you said, from budget standpoint, we've got to be doing that. Right. Uh, and I wanted to take a moment at the end, but you just touched on it. As well as the PGA went and all the effort that uh, made it successful. On the last evening, you lost an officer. Uh, to honor him, why don't you talk a little bit about the lieutenant that passed away? Yeah, Lieutenant Leroy Ninnick, uh, just a, a class guy, a 29-year veteran of the Sheriff's Department, uh, looking to retire at the end of the year. Um, just an unfortunate situation. Had worked all week out at the PGA as our uh, officer in charge of our security on, on the grounds. Um, had just finished his shift out there, had gone back to the department to change and was on his way home um, from work to Plymouth when um, uh, he was struck from behind on his motorcycle and tragically killed. Um, just uh, um, an unfortunate set of circumstances. My heart goes out to his family and his relatives and his friends and uh, we as a department have lost a, a family member as well and uh, we're, we're doing everything we can to, to cope with that. Uh, Leroy um, was, a, was a lieutenant uh, in charge of our criminal investigations division, uh, an outstanding guy, very involved in the department in the, over the course of his career, and he'll be sorely missed. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
kind words, nice of you to share with the viewers. I know some, many of our viewers may not see this, this tape until after the funeral, which is going to be this week, but uh, certainly our heart goes out to their, their friends and family members involved with this. Sheriff, the last couple of minutes that we have remaining, um, <clears throat> you mentioned some of the key challenges that, that you have, what have you, but what about key challenges in regards to law enforcement? What do you see happening in this community that concerns you and you feel are going to be challenges in, in the years ahead? Well, uh, you know, we, we need to stay proactive and we need to stay on top of crime trends and uh, to try to offer and be proactive in uh, offering maybe services that will uh, reduce those types of crimes. Drugs, gangs, um, drive-by shootings, all of these things that we hadn't heard about maybe five or ten years ago are now happening in our community on uh, disturbing, disturbingly so on a more regular basis. Uh, I think as, as, as law enforcement professionals we need to stay attuned to um, what, what is going on, what can we do to possibly intervene and uh, reduce or eliminate some of these things. Um, and that, that's another aspect of, I guess, of uh, strategic planning, long-range planning, that we keep on top of those things. So um, I, I really press my staff to, uh, to be, you know, to stay, stay up on what the trends are, uh, what we can expect, and, and some of the things that maybe we can do to, to eliminate or reduce that type of crime coming into our community. Technology, computer, um, internet uh, crimes, fraud, uh, sexual things that are, are going on uh, via the internet are, is another just, you know, kind of new um, venture to criminal investigations and law enforcement. And um, I'd actually, we have an officer, a detective that uh, has been trained in uh, computer and internet crime. So we're looking into that. In fact, we have a couple of investigations going on as we speak. Uh, so, you know, things like that. Uh, Technology, from a more from a um, uh, delivery of services aspect, we're looking at wireless 911. Uh, so that needs to be uh, that needs to be addressed. Um, so those are some of the things that are happening. Some of the things we're being confronted with, and some of the things I, I look forward to working with. Well, thank you so much, Sheriff Helke, for joining us today. We really appreciate the time you've taken. I know it's been a a uh, challenging time and uh, certainly thank you for all your hard work and especially your staff and everyone else who have been involved with making good things happen in the community. On behalf of Chairman Bill Gehring and myself, Adam Payne, thank you for joining us today and until next month, uh, we wish you well and if you have any suggestions for future programs, give us a call. Next month, Tim Finch, our Finance Director, will be here to talk about the challenges of the budget process. So until then, thank you.